Good evening, everybody. How are you? Good. Thank you so much for coming out tonight for our conversation with Masters of Sex Star and Emmy nominee, Lizzie Kaplan. Hello. Oh, hi. How are you? I'm great. How much longer do I get to say Emmy nominee until for the, the rest next? of your career? <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, people are writing Golden Globe nominees like in, for 20 years. No so. shit. Oh, so, yeah. like, if it doesn't happen this year, I can still say. Yeah. It's there's no expiration date on it. It happened. You own it. Cool. Emmy nominee. That's right. Great. It'll, I mean, it's a good thing you got the tattoo then, obviously. So yeah, it's like, not tramp like a stamp. Very ornate. <laughs> um. First things first, they just watch an incredible episode from season two. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious though, you know, the last time you were here was right after the first season had ended. Going into a second season of this show where you're playing such a specific character, was it difficult to slip back into Virginia's mm -hmm. shoes? Um, I'm trying to, it's, it's, we're midway through shooting season three right. and that experience re-entering for season three has felt very different than the previous two seasons. The first season I was just terrified and didn't know what was happening and thought that I didn't deserve to be there and so I, I was just scared all the time. And the second season I decided to just fully commit to only the show and nothing else in my life. So I uh, was only doing show stuff. I would go to work all day long, come home, work on the stuff, go to sleep, go back to work, saw nobody, had no social life and it was awful. So getting back into it, I think I assumed it would be difficult, and so I worked extra hard, and this season, I'm definitely more like, nah, I think I got it enough. I don't have to work quite that hard. Did, I mean, how long could you, were you in it at the beginning of season two? If you're saying you did nothing but that, was that literally for the entire season? Yeah, it was shit. It was how? awful. That has to be the most draining experience yeah. as an actor I could imagine. Completely. And I know that plenty of actors do that and like doing that. And I'm glad that I did. I'm grateful for the experience. But uh, it, was, it was not good. I was depressed a lot. Because they don't, they don't take it easy on anybody in our show. And so it was really hard to leave it behind uh, when I wasn't even trying to leave it behind. So it, it not only was rough shooting, but after the fact, it, it took like two or three months to not feel depressed. So fun across the board. Yeah. You were a great time. I mean, is it then to become a situation where you're like, well, I've completely blacked out the entirety of season two and I could not even tell you anything that happened? Or do you remember sort of a feeling and sort of how you felt about Virginia's journey in season two? Well, I haven't full disclosure. I've only watched the first three episodes. So what you just watched, I have not seen. Uh, as we were walking out, I cursed myself for not watching it with you because that would have been helpful for this. <laughs> but uh, So it's a show about Masters and Johnson okay. and their sex research. Yeah, okay. Keep no, up. the... There was something about season one where Virginia it was this fish out of water story and she was so light and bright and season two they just gave it to her. Just one thing after the next. Brutal stuff. So it, this episode in particular really kicked my ass. It, it brought up a lot of really personal stuff. I have experience with this particular disease and it was even more depressing than than the other episodes and then whatever the, the love I have for Julianne made it extra hard. I'm not sure what your question was. You, you did well. Have, no, you're yeah? good. Okay. Well, let's talk about that because the, Virginia's relationship with Lillian all season long, even, I mean, into the first season, was very interesting how they sort of interwove themselves with one another. There was a adversarial relationship that became very friendly that turned into like a true love, sisterhood, however you would feel. I mean, what do you think about when you think about that relationship? I look back on that relationship as one of the things I'm the most proud of by far. I don't think we see that. I, I couldn't pinpoint something uh, that I've seen where they, they treated this relationship with so much care. They treated it as a love story. And it's such a complex relationship, but female friendships are that complicated and deep and 
oftentimes they do feel like romantic relationships. And I thought that it was handled beautifully. I, I cared so much about her. It's, it's funny when you pretend to be in love with a man or whoever you're attracted to in real life, the gender you're attracted to in real life, you have this weird thing where you have to fake love for so long and then you have to figure out a way to be convincing between action and cut. You have to be believable as somebody who loves this person. And I've never really been asked to do that with a girl. And so I've never fallen in love so deeply with another actress. Uh, and this was my, my first time doing it and it couldn't have, I, I was so lucky to get to do it with her. She's the greatest and so incredible in the show. That said, I think hearing that now, it makes me view sort of that final scene with her in a completely different way. I mean, for Virginia to make the choice to let this woman she's in love with, you know, not romantically in that way, die because she knows it's better for her. What was your, do you remember your reaction when you read that script or found out that this was sort of the end of that journey? Well, I knew it was coming. I, I, to, I don't know if I knew specifically how it was going to go down, but I remember... Oh, it was so awful. We would just, Julianne and I would see each other in the makeup trailer when we were shooting this episode and just cry when we saw each other. It was so emotional. She's the rawest actress I've ever worked with. And I felt so sorry for Virginia, who I remember there's a, there's a part in this episode where she talks about not having many friends. And she doesn't have really any friends. Who's her friend? Bill? I mean, that's... <laughs> that ain't great. So... She, this was this was not only a, a individual who she believed in so much professionally and respected so much professionally, but this was her one true friend. This was her best girlfriend, and she didn't have to sacrifice any of her career goals to have this best friendship, which you see in our show usually with the housewives with Libby Masters. This was not that. These were two women trying to do something that no other women around them were doing. They shared that, and even though they didn't see eye to eye. <clears throat> on how to go about it, oftentimes. Uh, this was a woman, this was a, a, a female friendship that she could find within a working environment, and she knew that wasn't going to come around again. Did you find yourself relying on your own experiences to bring life to that final scene? I mean, you touched upon it, I don't want to <laughs> delve into that too much, but I'm curious, you know, if you have sort of that real world experience, do you have to sort of put that into your acting in a moment like that? Can you, or can you even keep it out from being in a moment like that? Are all the emotions sort of mixed up together? Yeah, they were mixed mixed in there. And there were, uh, my mother passed away uh, from cancer when I was a kid. And it took me a very long time to process that. And there's something about Julianne that really reminds me of my mother, just this very strong, put together woman. And so, uh, yes, certainly that was all being kicked up in me, but I wasn't sitting in my trailer thinking about my mother. I, because I had, again, no life whatsoever, it was very easy to be Virginia and feel what she felt. And when I was crying, I was really crying for Lillian. Uh, but I, I'm, I have to imagine that, you know, I was tapping into stuff that just exists. The episode, Blackbird, that everybody just watched that we're talking about, there are two lines in particular that I would imagine as an actor sort of are very specific to that character and really sort of pinpoint qualities about them and tell me if I'm wrong. The first is when uh, Lillian and her are trying to make the appointment in the morning and Lillian says to her, you just can't take no for an answer. I mean, that to me is exactly who Virginia has been through the entire first season and as we saw in the second season. When you see a line like that, do you sort of hone in on it and be like, yep, there we go, that's exactly the woman I thought she was? Yeah, and I, I mean, that makes it even sadder. This is a woman who sees her for who she is and she, Virginia is absolutely somebody who won't take no for an answer and that benefited Vivian, or Lillian and Virginia's professional relationship time and time again. Lillian did want to give up on things and Virginia wouldn't let her. And it's the same thing. It's you know, the, the thing that protects you uh, becomes your downfall if you can't keep it in check. And she couldn't hear her friend, who all her friend wanted to do was be able to die peacefully. And she couldn't have it. And I understand that. I think anybody who's gone through any experience with the death of a loved one, you don't want that person to make that decision. It's the hardest thing to digest. It's impossible. Um, 
it's just too painful. So, yeah. And then the other you sort of touched upon before, it's when uh, Virginia and Bill are in bed, and she says, you know, I'm always so careful with people. I keep that wall up. Lillian got in. Was that a big moment for Virginia in season two, the realization that people can still get in? Yeah, I think Virginia thinks she's got everything figured out, especially in these earlier episodes. Uh, now she doesn't have anything figured out. <laughs> she's well aware. But yeah, I think she thought she was in control of all of these relationships. Bill gets in in a way that is unexpected to her. And Lillian, these are the two people who surprise her. She doesn't see Lillian as somebody who's going to be her friend or mean something to her personally at all. Lillian's not even particularly nice to Virginia for a huge portion of their relationship. So uh, yeah, I do, th I do think that the surprise of that, when all of a sudden you have to assess what a relationship means to you and not in a casual way, but in a way where this person is going to go away forever. What, what did this mean for you? What did it bring up for you? And I, I think it was very surprising for Virginia that this little woman got in there. Yeah. Uh, following this episode, the show does a really amazing sort of repeated time leap. It jumps like a year, two years, three years over this course of just a single episode. Uh, as an actor, how do you approach a challenge like that where your character is changing so much but not all of it is really even seen? It's, it's hard. Uh, that was rough for us because it required so much trust in our showrunner and our producers and our writers because we had to trust that they knew what was going on there and we didn't. Uh, again, I haven't watched it, so I don't know if it works, but <laughs> are you sure? Yes. Okay, because we do another big uh, time <laughs> jump starting before we start season three, and because this story that we're telling, like the, the juicy bits of, of Masters and Johnson, their personal story and their professional story, it's 30 years long, so we can't do this in real time. We have to jump ahead and pick the things that mean stuff to us. Uh, and that episode, I mean, I understand why we had to fast forward, but... You definitely, as an actor, I felt like, but no, no, no this, that story's not done. We need to keep doing more and more. Like, I would stay on that Lily and Virginia stuff for three years. I didn't want to leave that at all. Uh, but you're in the service of people who hopefully have their eye on the whole story. And my eye is on one little part of the whole story. Well, if your eye is on that little part, I mean, how do you approach this jump from a performance standpoint? Did, was there anything that you felt you needed to do to change her or to understand the changes she would have undergone in the time we weren't seeing as the show was jumping ahead? Well, I mean, I'm pretty sure my hair changed, right? <laughs> and that's it, that's it. What else do you need? <laughs> Wait till you see the hairstyle season three. Ooh. It's totally different. Uh, yeah, but I also thought about it in the same way that like doing this show, for example, we've been now shooting it for over three years, uh, full calendar years. And I feel like we just started. I was 29 when we started and now I'm like in my 30s and it's so weird and I, I forget because all of it sucks up so much time and so much life that you forget to look around and kind of take stock of who you've become and how you've matured over these years. And I, I just assumed it would be the same for Virginia. She didn't have, she's not sitting around thinking about how she's changing. Everything's moving very, very quickly around her. Absolutely. We took some questions from the audience and you reminded me of a particularly timely one uh, from Erica. She says, what would you say is the greatest personal lesson that you have learned from Virginia? Whew. I've learned a lot of what not to do uh, <laughs> from Virginia. Uh, I suppose I've learned that if you're a person, specifically a woman, uh, and you want to do great things, but you also want to have a family, you're going to catch a lot of shit from a lot of people. And you're either going to listen to that and conform to whatever role you're supposed to, and that would make your trips to the supermarket maybe easier, and you'd get fewer side eyes from like the women brunch or whatever. Or you can fully commit to this idea that, you're, that you want something more, and you want something different. And it, you have to get to a point, I'm realizing, where you have to be okay with people not being okay with that. 
in order to do great things, you have to sacrifice quite a bit. Well, I mean, speaking of, I think the best example of that comes in the season two finale when Virginia, on some level, has to choose between her work and her family. Uh, for those of you who don't know, and if you don't, I'm so ashamed of you of not finishing season two. Uh, and I'm about to ruin it for you, so you're welcome. But her, hu her ex-husband basically says, I want our kids full time. And if you don't give them to me, I'm going to drag you into court. I'm going to expose everything you are doing with Bill, both professionally and personally. And I'm going to make it look indecent. And she says, this work is so important to me. I am willing to sort of give up this side of myself, to change our custody agreement, to allow you to have these kids. I mean, that to me was such an unexpected choice for her to make. What was your reaction when you sort of came to the point of the season where that was presented to you? Well, I really do believe that she was convinced that this harebrained plan she came up with was going to work, where she would temporarily give up the kids and then she'd be able to get them back once they did this, they do a television program and they'll prove to the world that what they're doing is legit and then she'll get her kids back. I believe that she had to be delusional enough to believe that in order to make this decision. Um, I don't have kids. I did just get a puppy. <laughs> and, like, I definitely wouldn't give up custody of my puppy. <laughs> but, yeah, I did. She, if she gave up her work at this time, she would have nothing. It was never going to be enough for her to be a stay-at-home mother. She's not even a particularly good mother. She doesn't have the patience for it. Uh, we get into this a lot in season three. She's very convinced that she doesn't have what it takes to be the right kind of mother. And this is everything that she's worked for. And being presented with this Sophie's choice, I think I would assume if I were in that uh, position, I would absolutely pick my children. But there's always more to the story, isn't there? So. I think at that moment, nobody's the villain of their own story ever. There's justification for any move you make, including one as drastic as this. And I really believe that she had herself convinced, like, oh no, this is, this is definitely gonna work. And so convinced that once the, the book came out and the work was respected, this would benefit her kids. The upside to sticking this out and seeing it through was far greater than giving it up now and becoming a housewife benefit for her kids. I mean, the cruel twist of fate is that the TV program gets shuttered because they get beat to the punch. She's now given up her kids for no reason. If you're saying you were as emotionally and physically committed to bringing Virginia to life in season two, what was it like for you when everything she was working for at the end of the season comes crashing down and she just breaks down into that fit of hysterics in Bill's arms? That did happen, right? <laughs> so you clearly blacked it out. Yeah, well, that was, that was the last day of shooting, because what a fun, easy last day of shooting. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that, well, here's the thing. It's, it's based on a true story. It's based on historical figures. We know that that was not the end of their professional story. There's more to come. So if anything, uh, as an actress, it's exciting. Like, oh, okay, you have now dug us into this 20 foot deep hole. How the hell are you gonna get us out of it? Because now shit's all kinds of fucked up. And none of this was true. Uh, the, the custody battle and stuff was something we came up with, our, our producers came up with. And so, if anything, it was like, okay, this is impressive. You have now put her in this position that seems completely impossible. How are we going to recover from this? And I also, uh, any moment where Virginia, Virginia can look to Bill and he shows up for her means a lot. Uh, sometimes we just, I move from moment to moment and it's so, it's so sad because everybody's so mean to Virginia all the time that when somebody's nice, I could even forget that he was the one who orchestrated the whole right. thing uh, because he's there to hold her when she's crying. You, and I, I'm realizing that more and more in season three because uh, the kids are older and so there's like, more people to sort of <laughs> treat Virginia terribly. And then uh, her parents come in 
uh, in season three, and the Michael O'Keefe plays my father, and he is the first character in three seasons who is just kind. And I just found myself just wanting to hug him in every scene, just curl up with him in every scene, because he's really the first one who's just not fucking awful to her. It is, it is bizarre. I mean, even if you look at season two, I mean, Lillian makes fun of her for having this relationship with Bill and sort of diminishes their her work with him. Bill makes fun of her for selling the diet pills. And yeah. she's constantly reminding people, like, I cannot pay my rent if yeah. I don't sell these diet pills. She's like, yeah. I could not go to college like you could, lady. Yeah. So I have to do what I have to do. I mean, are yeah. those the moments where you're sort of like in defense of her? You're like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah, completely. It's so, it's, they're operating under a different set of rules. These are people who, Lillian comes from money. Bill has this thriving practice and lots of money. Virginia is just trying to keep her head above water on top of changing the world. So yeah, I do think that her job is, is a lot more difficult and people are very insensitive to her plight in that way. Absolutely. Uh, one of season th uh, two's standout episodes, the one I think a lot of people had talked about, I saw it on a ton of, <clears throat> you know, year-end best of lists was the third episode fight. Yes, I've seen that one. Great, well here we go. Yeah. Um, for those of you who again, don't know, uh, <laughs> it's basically a bottle episode. It's you and it's Michael Sheen. And a baby in a tube. <laughs> in a hotel room yeah. for almost the entire 60 minutes. Yes. It's a two-person play. When you get that kind of script, what, as an actor, is it just a rush of adrenaline, like a pure excitement about tackling something as weighty as this? Absolutely. Uh, they had told us about that episode before we started shooting the season, so we knew it was coming. And when I received the script, it was just so well done. Amy Lippman <clears throat> wrote that one, and it was beautiful. And I... I appreciate this show the most when it's not two people sitting there being straight up about how they feel. It's this weird dance where nobody's saying anything near what they're really feeling. Um, there's so many layers to it. One that, you know, Bill and Virginia specifically, they, at this point in time, like they cannot be honest with each other. It's far too dangerous. But individually, they've buried whatever they're feeling so deep underneath so much stuff that even if a gun was pointed at her head, I don't think she could be honest with him in this moment. Um, so it was like reading an entire episode of my favorite stuff about this show. So yes, it was very exciting. Um, Michael Sheen is the greatest sparring partner of all time, uh, constantly challenging anybody that he's acting with. And you know, you don't wanna be the one who can't keep up. So there was a lot of that bubbling up inside of me when we were doing this. Um, but also the, the shooting of that episode was so unlike anything we had ever done. Michael Apted directed it, who directed the first three. Um, he's one of my favorite directors we have. He's just the coolest man ever. And he would sit with us for 90 minutes at the beginning of each day. And we would have probably eight pages of dialogue to shoot a day. And we would rehearse for 90 minutes, like a play, and figure it all out. And then the crew would come in and we would show it to them. And then we would perform this play that we had rehearsed. And then we'd go home early every day, which never happens. And so it was both the most intense week and a half, but it was also kind of lovely and amazing because we weren't there for 16 hours a day hammering it out. It was this opportunity to be so overly prepared uh, and come in with, and one of the things I like the most about working with Michael is that we, we hammer out some things together, but for the most part, I don't know what's going on in Bill's head, and he doesn't know what's going on in Virginia's head, and we leave that all for the screen. And in this episode, we got to just let it all out with each other. It was just, it was a very cool experience. Does it change your process in any way when you have an experience like this and you see like, oh, if we do it like this, then A, B, and C can happen as a result. Yeah, if we rehearse for 90 minutes, we can leave <laughs> right after lunch. Showtime's on board, right? They're cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's, it's different. You know, when you work with different actors, the process is, is different. Michael and I have been doing this now for a long time. We have a shorthand 
uh, where we don't have to include each other in lots of these conversations. Um, and we're there, the two of us are there pretty much every day. And we show up with our ideas and ready to go every day, which is why it's interesting when people come in and kind of like don't really know their lines. <laughs> so it's like not that kind of show. We kind of demand more of that but uh, than that. But when he, when Michael is, is giving it his all, there's nothing like it. He can be so terrifying and so heartbreaking and so kind. And there are these moments in the fight episode, like the smallest smile, it just kills me because he never smiles at her. Um, and hopefully I do certain things like that for him. But yeah, I mean, the whole experience was extremely intense. There's really graphic sex stuff that goes on on top of all this really open emotional stuff. It was, it was overwhelming. It was rough. The show has always been very frank about its depiction of sexuality. I think you can't have this show without that. Uh, and you had done an interview where you said the moment in this episode in particular where Virginia pleasures herself for him presented you with a very unexpected challenge. It was a scene you sort of weren't wanting to shoot. I mean, what was that like, sort of to have that emotion suddenly after a year and a half wash over you? Yeah, it was strange, because I, I, I pride myself on not being very uncomfortable with that stuff anymore, to the point where I can, I think, be of service to the girls who come in and are doing it for the first time, and it's totally scary the first time. And then after that first time, it's a lot easier, and then they'll, <laughs> They'll give me something to do that is, it's just, uh, I remember sitting in my trailer and up, up until the actual moment that we had to shoot it, I was like, oh, fine, whatever, it's just another naked masturbating scene. <laughs> okay, on a Wednesday. And like, I remember being in my trailer, like, I, I, I don't, I actually don't think I can do this. I don't think I can put one foot in front of the other to get to the set and do this. It feels way too overwhelming. And it was surprising, because I thought it was past that, so that was disappointing, and I had to go through you know, five minutes of beating myself up for being scared, which is always so helpful. <laughs> and then, uh, by the time we had to do it, I realized the version of it that scared me was nowhere near the version I wanted to do. The version that scared me was this male gaze, like super theatrical masturbation orgasm scene, like a like porn. And our show does not do it that way. And I realized, luckily at the last second, that that's not what this scene is about at all. This is about a woman in complete control, fully powerful, and it's so underplayed because even the moment of climax, it's not for him. It's for her. And as soon as I realized that, it made it a lot easier. And I told them, uh, you only get three takes, so fucking figure it out, because I'm not doing this all day long. <laughs> what, and it, there was an amazing bookend to it, because like two episodes later, yes. Michael Sheen had to do kind of the exact same scene. I know, which was the best. And he, by the time we shot that, he was so nervous, and it was like he had forgotten that I had had to do it myself. He was talking to me about it as if I had no idea how hard it was. <laughs> like, oh, okay. And then, of course, at the end of that, like, but he still has to, you know, come perform oral sex on me because I'm not just going to stand there like he got to and fully clothed because that would be too easy. <laughs> there was oh, God, an amazing... <laughs> <laughs> it's just like any other show. <laughs> yeah, um, yes. But you know, it's interesting what you were just talking about and sort of the realization for yourself in that moment that it was an empowering <laughs> act for Virginia. I would imagine that that's a realization on some level you come to quite often with her. I mean, she is a very empowered woman living in sort of a not so empowering time. Uh, what is it as she's evolved as a character over these two for us, three for you seasons that continues to allure you about her? She is changing a lot. Uh, you will see many, many changes with her in this upcoming season. And you have to sort of mourn the loss of the things you loved about the character originally, that bright sparkle that she had. She's starting to lose that. And one thing I really hope we do uh, over the course of the whole, the entire series, 
uh, because it's true to life. Bill was this very staid, buttoned up, cold man, and she was this vivacious, bright light of a person. And over the course of 30 years, they switch personalities. And he becomes much softer and kinder, and she becomes much harder. Uh, because she's super paranoid about people suspecting that she doesn't have a college degree um, and a number of other things. Uh, she just, it gets rougher and rougher for her and she's no longer the, the muse. She's the partner and it's very sad uh, in a way. I, I miss certain parts of her but I also celebrate so much of the new stuff which is this is not her boss anymore. She's an equal. She gives it as good as she gets it. And that was definitely difficult for me as an actress to swallow for the first two seasons that at the end of the day, he was the boss. He could fire her whenever he wanted. He could you know, pay her for things and not pay her for things and help her out and not help her out. And if you believe so much in a character and you live it for so long and it becomes so much a part of yourself, when somebody is abusive and you can't do anything about it, it makes you wanna punch the wall. So in a way, I'm happy that she stands up for herself more, but there is a lot of this idealistic shine to her that is starting to fade, which is, I think, very interesting, but also a bit of a bummer. Well, I'm, you know, it's sort of working off that. I'm curious, this is now the longest you've ever played a character for. I mean, you're, going, you're in a third season of a television show. It's an hour long. Yeah. Uh, what have you discovered about yourself as an actor, whether it be the kind of endurance it takes to bring her to life every day for that long, or how you approach a character every day for that long? What sort of discoveries have you made? There's something about shooting an hour long drama that feels very different uh, than anything else if you're one of the leads and you're there every day. Um, it's so much different than any, any other job I've had. It requires so much more physical stamina um, because we work just very, very insane. And we work like 80 hour weeks, usually more. Um, and then you have like a pathetic excuse for a weekend and then you're there at 5 a.m. on Monday. Like this is nothing new, this is what it is for all actors. But there's something about that grind that is exhausting me in a way that I didn't anticipate. And I'm finding, I remember before I started this show, lots of people were telling me, oh, here's, you should talk to other girls who do this. And I didn't think I needed it. It's like, I have my support system, I have my actor and actress friends, like I'm good. And then you realize, oh, this is not like that. This is such a specific thing. And it drains everything from your life. So I realized the importance of I don't know, eating healthy. That means something, like eating <laughs> eating for fuel. How many cups of coffee I can get away with before I start to like physically break down. Um, well, season two, I got really sick. It was the sickest I've ever been in my life. I missed oh, five days of work after you know a career where I hadn't missed one day of work ever. Um, it really kicks your ass. And on top of that, the emotional responsibility that comes along with it. So season three has been more about trying to live a healthy life while doing the best job I can on this show. And luckily, I've been playing this part for so long, it, it comes more naturally to me now. It doesn't require three hours of work at home every night. I can get it done in time, uh, which is great. But it's just, a, it's just a beast, and I hate complaining about it because it's by far the best role I've ever been lucky enough to play, and I'm so grateful for it, but it's just like anything. If you don't sleep, you go insane. Like, your brain melts, and then you're a crazy bitch, and it's, <laughs> it's awful. Uh, in between, I don't know if it was seasons one and two or two and three, you also filmed The Interview, yeah. uh, which was a much different tone, <laughs> yeah. slightly. Uh, uh -huh. Did you find it difficult to segue into a different character after spending so much time on Virginia, or was it refreshing to sort of break from that? It's always nice to take a break, especially in a comedy. I, I really miss doing comedy after doing such a dramatic piece for five months. So getting to work with Seth Rogen, it's all, I did another movie with him between uh, seasons two and three, and it's nice. It's like a vacation, and for the interview, I mean, my job could have been accomplished by somebody just 
rolling the text on a screen. <laughs> like I was fully there to, it was just exposition. Like this is your mission and here's some stuff that you have to do. And like, I have no personality, but that doesn't matter because now you know what the movie's about, the audience. <laughs> and let's start an international incident over it. <laughs> Um, the, and I, I think I had some maybe more stuff to do in that movie that didn't make it in, but I kind of knew that was going to happen because I was very much the setup. Mm -hmm. um, I shot a movie right before starting this season in London, Now You See Me 2. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in my hotel room in Oxford and like seeing stuff about Obama talking about the interview. And like I'm all over that trailer, but barely in the movie. And <laughs> I just wanted to call somebody like, don't come after me. I was like, I worked like six days on that movie. But that the Now You See Me experience, I think, is what I will chase. Because the, the Rogan movies, um, I was sort of in and out, and I didn't work very much on them. The, the Now You See Me, I was there for the run of the picture. And it was on location. And it was fun in the way that I remember being an actress. <laughs> used to be on every job because I did mostly comedy. And Masters of Sex is very hard. And there are moments of great joy, but it is n it's, it's really hard work. And so getting to do something lighter, uh, where you're just laughing on set and kind of learning your lines in the makeup trailer before you start shooting, it was nice. It was <laughs> the closest thing to a vacation I've had in a while. Can you do some close-up magic for us now? Yeah, I can, but like, we'll do this uh, when the movie comes out. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Allison has a question that sort of plays into this. She says, you move effort effortlessly from comedy to drama. How do you feel your comedic work has informed your dramatic work and vice versa? People ask this question a lot and I don't see too much of a difference uh, for myself. I'm not a slapstick, huge, broad, physical comedian. I'm not accessing a completely different skill set. It's meaning what you say during the take, between action and cut. The kind of comedy that I do, it, it's only it's only effective when it's meant and taken very seriously, as seriously as a dramatic piece. And I, Masters of Sex has definite comedic moments, and uh, any good comedy has moments of real emotional depth. So they don't feel all that different to me, except maybe the between takes where everybody's trying to be funnier than each other and it's like very competitive, that's <laughs> reserved for comedy. Um, but for the most part, it, it just doesn't it doesn't feel that different. Makes sense. Um, Alexandra asks, at what point in your life do you feel you put your all into your acting career? Right now, and especially this on past the stage. Yeah. <laughs> just this is it. <laughs> uh, I think it was that it was that y the second season when I decided to give up anything else in the service of this role. And it was, again, something I'm very, very happy that I did. And I don't want to do it uh, anymore. <laughs> I mean, not, not for this job. Maybe some movie will come up and it will require that, but I don't think I, I need to do it anymore. Uh, I don't think my process requires it. I'm curious, we talked about the idea that you sort of came to season three with a more relaxed attitude. How do you feel that has changed your performance? Well, I haven't seen anything, so I'm hoping it didn't like totally screw it up. <laughs> because, of course, that's a fear that I have. But in watching stuff that I've done, very rarely are my favorite moments the ones that I really focused on and rehearsed over and over and over again in the mirror. The ones that I think are the most authentic and that I like the most are the ones that just happened when I was in the scene. just in the scene. And so season three, that's all I'm going for, is just to show up prepared and ready to see where the scene takes me instead of trying to choose that direction sitting in my house alone, you know, reading the lines to my cat. Like that's not my decision to make. The scene gets to have its own life. Do you feel that you've put the work in now after two seasons, so your prep work is mostly just taking in the lines and it's not so much you know, journaling as her or reading about her. Do you feel like you've already done the heavy lifting in that regard and now you can just live in her? Yes, I feel like I know this woman. Yeah. I feel like I have ownership over this character, not the real woman. Uh, the first 
the first season was so uh, lifted from the book and what really happened. The second season, we took a lot of artistic license and took it in different directions. And so where I am now with her is she's a combination of true facts and what we've made her. So I do feel qualified to show up in the morning after not staying up till midnight working on it to know how she would behave and react at any given time. Um, off of that, Kelly asks, how inspiring is it to portray such a pioneering woman? It is, I mean, it, I keep thinking that my answer to that will change every season, that I'll be sick of it, but it, it's not lost on me that this may be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, a pioneering woman in a subject that is still so taboo and weird for so many people to discuss. Uh, it's a dream job, a dream job that kicks my ass every day, uh, but that I will be forever grateful for because I, it's just nice to play somebody with something to say, especially as a woman, and to get to do stuff like this or interviews where it always leads to more interesting conversations rather than who pulls pranks on set and how amazing is that? You know, it's, it's, it led to a bigger, broader conversation and I do feel like I have become more, I've matured into more of a woman walking alongside this woman and it has definitely changed me for the better. Well, it's been so inspiring to watch and so exciting to watch. And Lizzie, thank you so much for being here Thanks, with bud. us this evening. Thank you to all of you for coming out. And thank you to the Sack Foundation. And everybody have a nice night.